Oddly very philosophical from Jim Montgomery. We're not living in the past. We're not living in the future. We're living in the greater Boston area. We're living in the right now, man. What a long, strange trip, right? Seems like just yesterday he was making jokes about there's two vowels in the goalie's name. Oh, yeah. Now he's, now he's Confucius. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Yo, we're living in the present theory. We're uh, not living in the past. We're not living in the future. I'm right where my feet are there, eh? Ten about, toes. Standing, standing where your snowshoes are. Either. We're living in the present. So that's Montgomery. Thank you, Socrates. Not a big fan of his after the game last night. Although, some very pointed criticism of David Pasternak, which we'll get to coming up. Some very well-deserved criticism of David Pasternak. I don't know how Pasternak took it. Bunch of babies in that dressing room, so he's probably crying about it. It's probably uh, on the way to getting Monty fired if they drop game seven. Uh, we'll get to all of it here on Jones and Mego with our kid. On WEEI, it's a 2-1 loss. I hate that they scored in the final, like, tenth of a second. I hate that. It would sound so much better to say they got shut out. Because they basically did get shut out. Although I imagine if you had a Morgan Geeky anytime. Ryan, that's you? No, I was just okay. saying to Jacob back here. If you had oh. the shutout for the Leafs, you are BS Oh, that today. too. Well, that too. If you had a Morgan Point Geeky ticket. Second. Or, you know, Bruins under a half goal or something like that. I'm sure that was a very significant goal. I, I wish they got shut out. It would be so much better to say they got shut out because they didn't show up last night. And Nesson was doing all this hard work and heavy lifting, mostly Brick. Oh, it was actually a good period. Oh, they actually have more life than game five. Brick, even after after the Leafs scored, I tweeted this in real time. After the Leafs scored at the end of the second period, which was just a back-breaking goal. Thanks, Charlie McAvoy. We'll get to you. But just a back-breaking goal. Brick's like, oh, no, I think they got to feel pretty good about that period going into the dressing room. I'm like, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> they had one shot. One shot. After they had two shots in game five, they had one shot. I thought they were going to come out flying around. I didn't guarantee they were going to win the game. I felt like they would win the game. I would have guaranteed they were going to fly around last night. And it was pathetic. Pathetic. So that was just unbelievable last night. And no, I don't. I'm still picking them in game seven, not to get ahead of ourselves. But I, I, how could you possibly feel great after that performance last the night? The offense was so bad. It was so bad to start. Like the one little piece of credit that I'd agree with Brick with, at least in the first period, was that Pasta was trying to rip shots from the very beginning, but the shots were terrible. Like, he's shooting into, well, like, and they, and they didn't get through. Maple Leafs. And yeah, you couldn't even, they weren't on net because they couldn't even get to the net. They couldn't even get halfway to the net, and then it just goes the other way. The offense was non-existent for most of the night. I can think of, like, three short stretches where it looked like something might happen, and they kept attacking from the same points in the zone over and over again, getting the same result, which was that the puck couldn't even get on goal. Like, it was ridiculous. It was very frustrating to watch because, I, I, I'm sorry, like, I know you're going to go in on Pasternak, but your guy, Marshan, he didn't show up from the start. Oh, no. I Look, I, I, felt, He's worse on a about, milk carton. I felt worse about Marshan after game five than last night. I think he was a little better last night. Yeah, but I night. was with you. I thought he was going to wake up. I yeah. thought he was going to come out there. He was getting pushed around. Yeah, he looked totally outclassed. Marshan was top of my list after Game 5. He is not at the top of my list today, but it, he deserves all the criticism in the world. I'll, I'll criticize him. Top of my list is another name. That's where you start? You start with Marshan? No, I don't start with Marshan. Where do you start with? <sighs> it's the start of the show. I, mean, I, I know, with? I know. I just I, I, I want to go with the offense overall. I guess, you know what? No, I do start with Marshan. Because everybody else is going to pile on Pasternak, and Marshan is the captain, and we gave him so much credit for showing up and getting in their heads at the beginning of this series. And, oh, look look, look at you. You poke the bear. This is what you do. Now he's going to be a psychological terrorist. Well, not the last two games. He's been, he, he was a negative last night. Statistically, he was a negative. Like, he, what, what happened to him? They, they, you say that they figured out that Swayman's human. Well, I don't know what they figured out with Marshan. Something like subhuman. Yeah, I mean, look, Marshan deserves all the criticism in the world. Again, he was top of my list after game five. He wasn't good again last night. I don't mean to make excuses for him. But that's not where I start. Where do you start, Arkan? I start with David Pasternak, but I think there's something bigger going on here than uh, Marshand or Pasternak or anybody else. And I don't necessarily think that's a Jim Montgomery problem. I think it's sort of a core of this team problem. I thought Montgomery was not good either. But I, I sort of been saying all along that this team can't get anywhere if they don't have great goaltending and that great goaltending can carry them. They're getting great goaltending still. Even last night, I thought Swayman was good. And it's not enough. 
Like, that's that's the reality I think that we need to face right now is this team, even with a virtuoso performance in their in their uh, crease right now, is just sinking every game. I feel like they're sinking more and more, and it's become a team-wide thing. I don't think that there's anybody who's really standing out as uh, as playing well. I don't think that there's anybody in the forwards and the defense, maybe in the penalty kill. There's some good penalty kills. I think Mason Lowry has uh, been good. Yeah, and he was good when he wasn't getting his face slammed into the boards. Uh, well, but, that, wasn't, in fair, that wasn't his fault. No, it wasn't, but I mean, all in all, I, I know it's the Leafs, and I know that uh, I know that they're the chokers here, but I didn't see any progress. I didn't see any progress from the Bruins last night. Not at all. They had another terrible first period. Uh, they had a bunch of scoring chances and couldn't put a puck on net, which was unbelievable in the first uh, 10 minutes of the game. Mm-hmm. They had like four scoring chances. They missed the net each Plus time. Plus, had three in a row. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And uh, they got their ass kicked in the faceoff circle again. So, like, really, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything different in this game or Me anything neither. better in this game. Me neither. That I feel good about going into game seven. Not you. one thing. Concerned- but I start with David Poster now. Fair. Uh, and look, again, I'll say the same thing about Pasternak I say about Martian. Blame him all you want. I, I heard the coach after the game. We'll get to him in a second. But, like, blame whoever you want, not named Swayman. And Lorai's another good one. Like, that's probably one that I don't have a lot of criticism for. I think he's, like, he's playing above his level in Fine. this series. But my, my point is, criticize whoever you want. This is not where I personally start. Martian on the list, definitely. Pasternak on the list, definitely. I agree. There's, like, a concerted effort from Nesson to point out, like, how much better they were last night. They weren't any better. This was worse. This was coming off how they played in Game 5. You expected them to respond. All right, fine. They were invisible at the beginning of Game 5. They turned it on after that. Somewhat understandable. They were up 3-1. This, they got embarrassed in Game 5 and had no response. This is worse. Not better, Nesson. Worse. I start with McAvoy. McAvoy is where I start. It's a good place to start. McAvoy iced the puck, which led to Toronto's go-ahead goal last night. McAvoy was on the ice for the second Nylander goal, which was an empty net goal, but still, he's the only player, I think, who was a minus two. And the freaking puck goes in off of him <laughs> and goes in Swayman. The, the Leafs didn't beat him last night. They didn't beat Swayman. They bounced in and off McAvoy because McAvoy's standing in the way of Jeremy Swayman. And so, to me, that's where I start. And it wasn't all bad for McAvoy. Right? He was almost 27 minutes of ice time, 11 hits. I felt like he was making a concerted effort to try to get some shots on net. Not that hardly any of them actually landed on net, but he was at least trying to get some shots on Joseph Wall. I start with McAvoy. Like, McAvoy's the reason that you were behind in that game. So that's where I start. Start wherever you want. I know where Jim Montgomery started after the game last night. Here he is, asked about Marshan and Pasternak, which is important. He's asked about both together, okay? He's asked about where the superstars are. They were carrying the team earlier. Just know. He was asked about both. Here's where he took it. You got so much out of Marshand earlier in this in this series. Do you need more out of both him and Pasternak in for Game Seven? Your best players need to be your best players this time of year. Um, I think the effort is tremendous. Uh, they need to come through with some big time plays and big time moments. I think Marshand has done that in the series. Pasta needs to step up. Pasta needs to step up. That was very blunt. Okay, now let me piggyback. Not wrong. No, I don't think so either. But it's interesting he, like, separated them, right? Yeah. He's like, Marshan's done it. Pasternak, he stinks. It's almost like it's his, like, two kids who he's like, you're doing fine. You're okay. I appreciate it. Goofus you, and gallant. <laughs> yeah. You, on the other hand, get out of here. Okay. So now on the heels of that comment from Montgomery, let me replay you, Mike Milbury, yesterday. We had a short show. Maybe you didn't catch this. We played it somewhere in the 4 or 5 o'clock hour. I don't even remember where we played it. Uh, but this is Mike Milbury yesterday on the Greg Hill Show. Something's going on there. I mean, I've talked to a couple people. I mean, he looks unhappy. I don't know if it's because he's not getting enough, you know, passes on the power play or what have you. But he, he was, he's been brutal at times. He's been a liability. His turnovers are terrible. I mean, he took a penalty the other night that was, was awful. Um, I mean, he, he looks like he's you know, off of his game. He doesn't look like he's having a lot of fun. I saw him bail out and make some bad decisions in certain situations and then come back and actually block the shot, which was remarkable for him. And, <laughs> and uh, But I, I don't I don't like his game. Um, and without his game straightening out, whether they win this series or not is irrelevant. They're not going anywhere with their best player playing at, you know, maybe – 65 to 70 percent of his capacity yeah so look i um i just had that ringing in my ears when i heard montgomery after the game but even watching the game every time that they had a close-up on him he looked freaking miserable and maybe it's because he couldn't get a shot even through you know surprise shooting through like three defenders and one of your own guys but he looked miserable every time the camera was on him okay so what do we think is going on 
I, I, does he hate his line mates? Like, I because they were moving him a little bit. It's not like he was with the same oh, no. guys the they, entire night. They had him out there with Geeky and yeah. Marshan mm-hmm. in the third period, yeah. So I don't know if it's something where it's like he doesn't like playing with Zaka. He doesn't like playing with DeBrusque. But I, it's like, what what else could it be? What else is he feeling like, okay, he's not getting the shot opportunities that he should? He's, I don't know. He's, he's not somebody who really creates for himself most of the time. How do we think it's going to go? Uh, with the coach who was too mean, fired, Bruce Cassidy. How do we think that's going to go over in that dressing room? Not great. When Monty calls out David Pasternak, singles him out. He's asked about Mar- The question really was about Marshan. And Pasternak was kind of tagged on to the end of it. And Montgomery decides to go all in on Pasternak. Pasternak needs to step up. How do we think that goes for Monty? Arcan, based on how things went for the coaches before him. I mean, regardless of what he says about David Pasternak, if they lose this series, I think that Monty's in big trouble here, and I think he, he probably gets fired. deserves to be. You know, I mean, this no, no. can't do this two years in a row. He's getting, getting fired. fired yeah. But if I'm they saying, lose. how do? You, but do you think? Do you think that gets Pasternak to respond? Is my question. Like no, these guys are all not. giant babies. Probably not. I don't think so. I think that Montgomery's doing this because he's kind of desperate. Usually, when he criticizes the team, it's the whole team. You know, we all have to be better. These guys, I'm pissed. I'm pissed at these guys. Or blah, Jake blah, blah, blah. Uh, Or occasionally DeBrusque. That's true. But it's usually Usually sort of more of a nebulous criticism, I feel like, with him. So if he's zeroing in like that, he's clearly frustrated. Everybody's frustrated. And you ask what it could be, I think you have to give some credit to Toronto here. They're doing a good job on uh, Pasternak for the most part, I'd say. They're uh, blitzing him usually when he tries to make an entry into the zone. They've uh, got, you know, different rotations going at him. And I just sort of feel like he's been flustered a lot of this time. There hasn't been a lot of opportunity for him to get his offense going. And I think the Maple Leafs is, you know choky as they are, they've done a good job defending against him.